Are you tired of those print then cut size limitations? If so, let me help you. Hello everyone and welcome to Cricut Tea with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we are going to bypass those size limitations and I am going to share a hack with you that will be very useful in your future sublimation projects. We are going to be sublimating on clear sublimation HTV and we will be using this design right here, which is a free file from Design Bundles. I am going to show you my full step-by-step -step tutorial and I will walk you through the process. Now, I did get a lot of blue fibers on my cotton. This hoodie is 100% cotton, but I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So stick around all the way till the end so I can share my process and ensure that doesn't happen to you. At the end of this video, if you find this helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. So without further ado, let's look at materials and then we will head right on over into Cricut Design Space. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Maker. I am using Clear Sublimation HTV by HTV Rant. I am using the glossy version of this. There is a matte or glossy. Either one of them would work for this project. I'm using several green standard grip mats. I'll use my pen pen weeding tool. I am using Cricut Everyday Iron-On. I'm actually going to use the red and the black. I'm using a few sheets of butcher paper, Cricut heat resistant tape. I'm using HTV Ront sublimation paper and I will use a lint roller. I'm also using a 100% cotton hoodie that I purchased locally. It is a Gildan Heavy Blend 100% um, cotton hoodie. Okay and my heat press is a Starcraft clamshell heat press 15 by 15 that I purchased from 143 vinyl and my printer is an Epson EcoTank 2760 that I converted for use with sublimation ink. The ink that I use is Hippo Sublimation Ink. I am on the designbundles.net website and they currently have this file right here that's called Hanging with My Nomies free and I have already downloaded this file, but what you would need to do is download this file for your use. Now let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to the Cricut Maker. I am using the beta version of Cricut Design Space version 7.22.146. The first thing I'm going to do is upload the file called Hanging with My Nomies and I'm going to add it to the canvas. When the file comes in, it is going to come in pretty big and I can look at the top right here and see that the proportions are not locked. I am going to lock them. The next thing I'm going to do is bring the view down on my canvas. Right now the view was at 100%. I brought it down to 50%. Now I can still look at this file and see that it is pretty big and I know that you know, this would exceed Cricut Design Space's allowable print then cut size. And since I know that I will be using a hack, no matter what size I make this design, it will exceed Cricut Design Space's allowable size. But I do want it to look nice on my hoodie. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over here to the left and grab a template. And I am going to grab a template for a hoodie. So I'm gonna click on hoodies right here. And I know that templates don't actually get cut out. They just give you view of what the design will look like on your fabric or on your shirt or your hoodie in this case. So I am going to actually change the size of this hoodie. I'm going to change it to a men's classic and the size of the hoodie is a large. Now this represents the hoodie that I'll be using 
for this tutorial and this will work perfectly. So now once I look at my file, I know that I will, if I wanted to use it, it will still be way too big. Not only would it be too big for Cricut Design Space, but it would be too big for this hoodie. So I am going to bring this down just a little bit because the way I'm envisioning this, I kind of want these gnomes and I'm only really paying attention to the gnomes at this point. I want these gnomes to kind of look like they are like hanging out right here on the top part of the hoodie. Okay. And I think I like them that size right there. So I'm just kind of envisioning this, just the gnomes, not the text. I like them right there at that size. So I know that I need to break this file up because I know that Cricut Design Space will not allow it. If I look over here in my layers panel, I see that if I click right here on the layer, it says this is not supported by the maker. The image is too large. Reduce the image to 6.75 by 9.25 or less. Okay, so I know that I'm going to have to do something. Well, I have this file selected and if I look in my layers in my panel at the bottom right with this file selected, I see that I don't have any options. I can't slice, combine, attach, flatten or contour. There's basically nothing I can do with this file. So in order to change this file, I'm going to have to change it from a print then cut. But I also know that I want to keep this as a print then cut just for reference. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this file is I am going to duplicate it. Okay. And I am going to move my duplicate over here just for now. Now, once again, with this file in the format that it's in, there is nothing I can do with it. I am going to have to change this file from a print then cut actually to a basic cut. Okay. So when I did that by changing this file from a print then cut right here to a basic cut over here, I did not change the size. So these two files are still the exact same size, but I know that I'm working with something different right here. Once I look down here and my options, I now see that I have the option to contour this. And I also see up here in the layers panel that I don't have an error message. If I wanted to just cut this out with regular vinyl, I could, and I would not have a problem doing that. Well, because I know I can contour this and I know that I want to break this file up, I also know that I need to break it into pieces that will work best for me. I am going to duplicate this file four times. I'll start out with four times. I may need to duplicate it five times, but I'll start with four and I'll go along and I'll make a decision if I need to. I'll bring the file down right here just so that we can keep our eyes on it and keep in your mind that I am contouring this file in order to break it apart. When I look at the original file, I know that I have basically four layers or four images. I have the text, which will count as one file. And then I have the three gnomes. So if I look at that all together, I know that I basically have four files or four images. But I also know that I want to separate this text. I want hanging with my and gnomies to be separated. So I think I have already just made a decision that I am going to duplicate this five times. If any of that has confused you, stay with me. I promise by the end of this tutorial, you will feel a little bit better about this, okay? So I'm gonna take this first duplicate and I am going to duplicate this four more times, okay? So I'm going to click on duplicate, 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 duplicate. So now I have a total of five files down here at the bottom, okay? I'm gonna move this one over just for now. I'm just going to put this one right here. What I'm going to do first is separate hanging with my away from the rest of this file. I'm going to click on contour and I am going to select hide all contours and I'm only going to 
take out the portion of the file that says hanging with my so i'm going to click on it right here in this panel okay and i am going to click on that first known because i don't need it and then i'm going to get the little pieces that are um, in the middle of the letters okay let me grab all of those okay i think i've done it i think i have everything let me look at it really good i think i have all of it I'm just double checking myself okay and I'm going to click out and now I have this file right here that says hanging with my and I can leave it right here because what I'm going to do on this front side of the hoodie is redesign this original file so now I'm going to select this second duplicated image and I am going to click contour and this time I am going to contour the word Nomi's out. Okay, so I'm going to select hide all contours and I am going to go through and select all of the parts of the word Nomi's. Okay. Okay. And then I am going to put this gnome out and all I want is this part of the note, the word nomies. Now I've already decided that I want this word right here on the pocket of the hoodie. So far, I'm loving the way this looks. And I know that I probably want this word hanging with, or these words hanging with my, just to be a little bit smaller because I want them to, be, I don't want it to be just too doing too much and if I change my mind I'll fix it later okay so the next thing I know <clears throat> that I want is I want to um, separate these gnomes okay so what I'm going to do I want to have one image of the gnomes separated and then I want to have the three gnomes together but I'll do the separated image first so I'm going to click on the file I'm going to click contour and I'm going to select that first gnome I'm going to separate this gnome from the other gnomes and the words so I'm going to select hide all contours and look that's what I want is just that first gnome okay I'm going to do the same thing here this time I want the gnome that's in the middle okay I'm going to click contour and I'm going to select hide all contours I'm going to select the gnome that's in the middle and I'm going to remove the gnome that I already have okay so I'm going to move this gnome up here perfect all right and the last thing i'm going to do i want to duplicate this one more time just to have it over here just in case i need it and i won't have to start all the way over okay i'm going to select that third gnome the one that's standing right here with his hands up and i am going to click contour and i am going to select hide all contours and i am going to select that gnome and i'm going to remove the first one and i'm going to just choose it right here okay I, I contoured the file that was at the top all right so this looks great this looks excellent now i have the gnomes you know pretty almost where i want them relatively speaking however i am going to contour this image and let me tell you why i want to do that well you'll see in one second what I'm going to do now is contour this last file and I'm only going to take the words away, but I'm going to leave the three gnomes in their exact position. So I'm going to click contour and I am going to select hide all contours and I'm going to make sure I have the three gnomes. Okay, so that's what I want and I am good to go. Now I'm going to move my original image over here and I'm going to move all of this stuff over here also. And I'll show you what I plan to do with this. Okay. Now at the, in the intro, what I explained is that we would be sublimating on clear HTV. What I'm going to do is use this image of the three gnomes as my layer of clear HTV. OK, 
okay so these gnomes will be in the exact spot I want them to be in it will be easy to cut them it will be easy to keep them together it will be easy to press that layer this layer of my image or my project will be my black layer of HTV I'm gonna put that right here that string won't be in that exact spot so I like it just the way that it is and because I know this is going to be black vinyl I'm gonna go ahead and change this to black so we can get a good view of what this is going to look like once it all comes together this layer of my file will be red HTV and I know that I want this right here on the bottom of my hoodie I am going to change the color of this to red stay with me so I have my black HTV right here hanging with my I have my gray layer which will represent the clear HTV and then I have my red layer of HTV so everything on the bottom will be black in order to sublimate on the clear HTV I am going to have to have that bottom layer and then I'm going to put the sublimated images on top of the clear HTV now because I made duplicates and they are individual I have now made it possible to bypass Cricut Design Space's allowable print then cut size so what I'm going to do is take this first gnome which matches the gnome right here and I am going to change it back to a print then cut and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to restore this image and what I'm going to do is put this here when it's time for me to sublimate okay I want to do the same thing with this one I'm going to take this image of the gnome I'm going to change it back from a basic cut I'm going to change it to a print then cut I'm going to click right here I'm going to restore it and now this matches this gnome right here and I'm going to do the same thing with this one I'm going to change it from a basic cut back to a print then cut and I am going to click right here to the right and I'm going to restore it I'm going to move it up and it should fit right here perfectly now I love the way this looks all together I have broken my file apart I have bypassed Cricut Design Space's allowable print then cut size and I am going to have a hoodie that looks excellent I love this already now this was my original image and this would have looked nice however I like the way I changed it over here so now I don't need this image anymore I can save it if I want to or I can just turn it off right here and what I better go ahead and do is save my project okay I'm gonna go ahead and click Save and I am going to call this gnome hoodie I'm gonna click Save now once I click make it what should happen is that I should have oh, let's see one two three four five I should have six mats I should have three print then cut images which will be these gnomes they will cut individually I will have one mat for my black HTV one mat that will represent my clear HTV and one mat that will represent my red HTV okay so once I click make it let's see what happens okay so I have my first gnome right here I am going to mirror this I have my second gnome and I am going to mirror this I have my third gnome and I am going to mirror this I have my layer of clear HTV I am going to mirror this I have my layer of black vinyl I'm going to mirror this and I have my layer of red vinyl which I am going to move to this layer where I have my black vinyl because it doesn't make sense to use six mats when I can actually use five mats so I'm going to click right here where these three dots are I'm going to click move object and I'm going to move this to the mat that has the black vinyl I'm going to click confirm once I do that I am going to move this down I'll just move it to right here 
at the six inch mark and I will make sure that my black HTV and my red HTV are separated and I'll know exactly where to place the vinyl on the mat. I'm going to click continue. I am going to work with my printed images first. I am going to work with my first gnome. I'm going to send it to the printer. I am sending this to my Epson EcoTank 2760. I'm going to keep the ad bleed on and I am going to use system dialog. I'm going to click print. I am going to select preferences. I am not going to mirror this because I've already mirrored it in Cricut Design Space. So if I were to mirror here, they would cancel each other out. So I'm not going to mirror the gnomes in my printer settings. I have my paper type set to premium presentation paper mat. The quality is high. Um, I am going to do a print preview. I'm going to click OK and I am going to click print. Okay, this is exactly how my printed image should look. I will get all three of my gnomes printed and I will do that back on the camera. My printer is an Epson EcoTank 2760 and the paper that I'm using is HTV Runt sublimation paper. So I'm going to get the paper inserted into the printer and I will get all three gnomes printed out and I will speed this part up. Every time I print a sublimated image, before I do anything else, I always let it sit on the heat plate for about a minute or so, and that just ensures that the ink is dry. I have all of my images on the mat, so I'm actually using five mats. I like to say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So I have the first print and cut image. I have the second image. Then I have the third gnome then i have the clear htv which is on the mat with the matte side facing up the shiny side is stuck to the mat and then i have the black vinyl at the top the part that will say hanging with my and the red at the bottom which will just say gnomies so we will get the gnomes cut out first I am going to use the printable vinyl cut setting because this paper is a little bit thinner than the ASUB sublimation paper and I don't want to run the risk of this paper ripping. So I'm going to use the printable vinyl cut setting. With the clear HTV Rant Sublimation HTV, I changed the cut setting to everyday iron on and I'm using more pressure. Once again, the matte side is facing up and the shiny side is on the mat. So if you're gonna be using this, the matte side is up, the shiny side is down. going to start to get my images weeded out. Now, even though I have used the HTV Rant Clear Sublimation HTV multiple times, I still refer to the instructions 
while I'm using it because I don't feel like I'm an expert just yet. The first thing it says is to heat the heat press up to 200 degrees Celsius. That is equivalent to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have my heat press set to 392 degrees. I am going to do a quick pre-press on the hoodie for about five seconds. And we will keep going with this process, okay? That was a little bit more than five seconds, but it's okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get the clear sublimation HPV and I am going to put it far enough down that it, the gnomes are actually sitting on the, like right above the pocket. Now the directions say to do, to apply heavy pressure for 10 to 20 seconds and do a cold peel. I am going to apply heavy pressure, but I'm going to do 15 seconds instead of 20 because I don't want to run the risk of burning the hoodie, especially since this is white. You know what? I forgot to do my lint roll. So glad I just thought about that because you did not remind me. I forgive you. I am going to lint roll this because if I don't, those little blue fibers would have been pretty much everywhere. Lint roll even in the places where you don't think you will be pressing just in case, okay? Now I am going to press my nooms. I'm just gonna put them right down here on the pocket because that's where they will be hanging out. Okay, that think that looks, I'm going to put my Teflon sheet on top and I'm going to press this on 392 degrees for 15 seconds. Okay. Now, this, according to HTV Rant, it says to do a cold peel, not a cool peel, not a warm peel. Okay, so I'm going to remove this from my heat press. I am just going to fan this and wave it. I think for some people who get the image stuck to the clear um, sublimation HTV, it happens because you don't let it cool off enough, um, but you can still peel it away at some point. Um, but my suggestion is to do a cold peel. So I'm going to let this completely cool down before I move on to the next step. Okay, it has cooled down. And while this was cooling down, I did increase the time on the heat press because the next step says, set the heat press to 200 degrees Celsius, which is 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Apply heavy pressure for 40 to 50 seconds and then do a warm peel. So I'm gonna peel this off. And I'm going to be honest and tell you right here that this clear sublimation HTV is hard to see on white fabric. All right. Take my first gnome and peel them away from the mat very carefully, making sure not to rip it because this paper is super thin. But this is my first gnome. Look how cute he is. Look how cute. Okay, so I am going to place him carefully on top of the one that looks just like him, and I am going to tape it down. But I gotta be super careful doing this. And it might even be easier to do this away from the heat press. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm gonna do that. Let me move you over here. I'm gonna remove this from the heat press and put it on my table and get this taped down. I have the image taped down as good as I can, all three gnomes. Hopefully you can see that. I tape, 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 tape. I may have used too much tape, but I don't know if there's really such a thing. What I am going to do is put some butcher paper on the inside of the hoodie to make sure that none of the ink goes through even though i feel like it won't because 
the gnomes are not directly on the hoodie. They're actually on top of the clear HTV. But just in case, I am going to put butcher paper inside. I'm gonna add one more piece of tape because I'm the queen of over tapers anonymous, except I'm not anonymous. I am going to put butcher paper on top of this and we will get this pressed 392 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 seconds with heavy pressure. It's beeping. I'm nervous. Ooh, I'm nervous. Okay, so I see a lot of blue fibers, which I'm not very happy about that, but I guess I did not do a good enough job of lint rolling down here. That's why it's important to lint roll everywhere. Um, so I'll make sure to do a better job of that. I am confident that it's sublimated though, because I can see it through the paper. So let's start to peel it back. Let me move you in closer so you can get a good look at it. Do you see them? Okay, I'm so excited. So I can take that paper out, but this is how they look so far. Look at that. Look how cute. All right, my heat press is set to 315 degrees for 30 seconds. I'm using Cricut Everyday Iron On in red, and I am going to place this just right here on the pocket and I'll just line it up right there with the pocket. I am going to put, I have butcher paper inside the hoodie and I'm gonna put butcher paper back on top. So I'm okay to press this again. And I am going to press my, my gnome, my HTV. So I'm gonna put Teflon on top. I'm gonna press that for 30 seconds. It's beeping. All right, Cricut's vinyl is a cool peel. This looks excellent. I'm excited. I am just gonna move it down and I'm going to press this part of my file hanging with my. So I'm gonna put the butcher paper back on top. just to be sure and I'm going to put the Teflon on top of that and we will press this 315 for 30 seconds it's beeping all right we are almost finished we're at the final stretch the final countdown okay now let's reveal it this is my red, and this is my black, and this is the finished product. And what am I going to say? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love it. I love how it came out. Even with all of the blue fibers, I am in love with this. I love the glossy effect. 
I do love the matte also, but I love the glossy. I feel like it adds a little bit of something to it. I'm so excited with how this came out. Did this take a little bit long? Yes. Would it probably take this long next time? Also, yes. I did get a lot of blue fibers. I did not do a good job of lint rolling as good as I thought I did, but I am very impressed with how the colors came out. I definitely would try to do this again. I've used clear sublimation HTV multiple times. I probably would have made this a little bit bigger, but you can personalize it the way you want. Remember, this is a free file that is available from the designbundles.net website. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.